Right, it's the end of the day here where uh, John Popham and I have been talking to a whole bunch of wonderful people in Dudley about our society and big lottery and people power change and also particularly how media can help people share stuff, collaborate better and, and so on. I think this is a conversation that's going to carry on afterwards, but I just wanted to capture a couple of the, of, of the uh, things that came up. Um, one was that a uh, number of programmes running here, uh, be local, community first, as always administered by different kinds of organisations, all of whom are encouraging people locally to share stuff more. And I think in some instances saying, you can't get any money from us unless you set up your own website. And that prompted me to think, but are those organisations setting up their own websites? Are they blogging and tweeting and communicating? Anyway, I just wondered if you've got some ideas on how social media and other media might help collaboration locally and help collaboration between local and national organisations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we haven't got, as far as many of us have, have looked, many hyper-local websites in Dudley. So one of the things we started in April, thanks to funding through a previous programme, was social media surgeries. So whilst we know we've got the capacity and people who will come along as volunteer surgeons to those surgeries to help local groups to set up um, their own sites, what we think we need through these programmes like Community First and Big Local is perhaps a little bit of injection of a bit more support um, to bring people together in an area so that groups that are online can share groups that aren't online perhaps can get online if they want to, but then there's perhaps a kind of a, a connected portal for, for example, a community first area that's got money to spend in their area and are being asked to demonstrate what they do with it. Um, I think what's going to be difficult with some of that is that a lot of our colleagues in the public sector um, either are using out-of-date browsers and aren't allowed to update them or have various restrictions on what kind of websites they can use. So it becomes a conversation within one community, if you like, um, and the public sector is not able to be part of that, unfortunately, at the moment, unless they have officers who are prepared to go home and spend a bit of time at home on their internet looking at what's going on. Um, so half the stories will be missing for some people and we won't be able to influence um, in the way that we might want to in terms of what the public sector could do to help um, communities to thrive in what they're doing and work better with public servants. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, looking at the organisations that are hosting these funds, like Community Development Foundation and Big Lottery, um, it's difficult to see sometimes on the, the, the online spaces that they have what's really happening. It seems as though you have to wait a while until a, a kind of quite flash video or, you know, kind of piece of text and nice, nicely taken photo arrives. Why can't they be doing what they're encouraging us to do and just get out there, get it done, the Nick Booth at Podnosh approach, just get it on the internet and then go home and have a pint or something. <laughs> Start those uh, kind of conversations. So we've been hearing a lot today about the kind of rebalancing of partnerships between public services and community organisations, people doing more for themselves, being supported by public services and so on. But here's one area in which the public servants are perhaps uh, less capable and less empowered than some people in the community. But what would it take to actually make that shift? Because it's a big culture shift, isn't it? Does, does it have to be the chief executive that says, let's do this? Or is there some way we can drive those changes um, from the community side? Um, I think we can try. Um, in Dudley, we talk about having an empowering approach to the way we work and engage with communities. And part of that approach is about how we empower staff in organisations, including inside public sector institutions. Um, and just reading something over this weekend written by um, a communications officer in another local authority who's very open and honest um, online about her experiences and particularly how she feels about things and the difficulty that she's had as an individual experienced communications officer in taking over some of the responsibility for her council's Twitter stream and getting her voice right and being able to deal with questions coming in that she doesn't necessarily know the answer to and has to almost put someone tweeting in on hold while she tries to find the right person to speak to to get a response. I think there's a whole host of support needed for individual human beings mm -hmm. to start to find their voice online if they're being asked to actually interact rather than just listen. And at the moment, as I said, public sector can't even listen because they haven't got access. Um, 
and and feel I think one of the things I hear people talking a lot about online is is about kind of it being okay to fail, so we can make mistakes as as we might in a phone conversation or an email with someone, but that's okay and we learn from it. Um, so not to, that people shouldn't feel so fearful of doing something that they don't do it because of the worry about failure or making a mistake. Um, so I think it's everything from the leader of a council, its elected members, its chief executive and directors to the front line. There needs to be changes around access in terms of IT, um, policies and procedures and, and primarily support I think is the key thing really. That does throw up that um, uh, public services are very vulnerable always from uh, attacks from uh, mainstream media and if social media is involved and so forth then uh, every little slip up is picked up and so forth, the need for support and, and that kind of comfortable feeling of, of, of being able to take risks and so on is important. And I just wonder if um, as more people in the community are using social media and become champions for that, they can kind of reach out and provide some support across two people in the local authority. So if there's a you know, snarky piece in the local paper about it, then there'll be some defence from the community. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think we're seeing as well, because we're doing social media work with local community groups, we see that potentially we've got something off to offer to the public sector rather than what is often the other way around in terms of this. So um, we had a great day here. Thanks for lots of conversations. Do you, do you think there's some um, ways that uh, Dudley might be even more of a kind of a learning space for um, this sort of activity? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we love learning. We're open to that. So, yeah, we welcome conversations and collaborations with anyone that's kind of working in the ways that that we're trying to.